Hi everyone, this is Rachel from Kaggle, and today I'm going to walk you through using our kernel's notebook environment to do your coding. So when you start a new notebook, this is what you're going to see. You can see that I have started this notebook on a Kaggle data set. It's this family household with Mary's couple data from the Census Bureau. Uh, and if I want to find out more information on this data set, I can open the link in a new window. So I'm just going to go around and show you everything uh, and do a little bit of coding to, to show you some of the potential of the platform. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do is create a title. Uh, and I'm going to call this family, nope, family, an, a nope, a, a analysis uh, test. Uh, and this title does have to be unique among all of the titles in your uh, kernel's history. And you can see once I save the title and I click out of it, then the commit button turns blue. So this will allow me to save a static copy of my work that I can refer back to later. My work is being saved as I go along. Uh, you can tell by looking at this draft save. If you have some sort of error, like you lose internet connection and it, it drops the session, uh, you'll see an error message here letting you know that you need to download your notebook and save it locally. And you can do that using this button. This will out download your IPython notebook file. Or if you have a, a file locally you want to upload, you can upload an IPython notebook file here, so a Jupyter notebook. You can also, if you prefer to work in R, we start our kernels by Python in default, but you can also use R. Uh, and in Python, we only support Python 3, so if you're using Python 2, you're going to run into some errors. Uh, this is the coding environment if you used a Jupyter notebook before, it's very similar. If I want to add additional cells, I click in an existing cell, and I can click this button to create a cell above the current cell, and this one to create a cell below the current cell, and then of course I can delete cells using the little trash can icon. If I want my cell to be a markdown cell, so supporting text rather than uh, code, I can do that, and then I can uh, you know, pay, write some text in here, I can do some bullet points if I like. and then some random text, and then to see this correctly formatted as it would be when I'm done committing it, I can just click outside of that cell and it will render the markdown. Uh, other things, I can uh, run cells by clicking in them and then uh, hitting control and enter, or clicking in them and then hitting this little um, blue button here. If I don't want to see the output, so this has uh, this is listing all of the files in the input directory, I can hide output using the output button. This will only hide it in the published notebook, which is what we see once we hit commit. When we're working in the editor, it won't hide anything. And we can also choose to hide the, uh, the code as well, if that's something you're interested in doing. Uh, and here I'm actually going to uh, delete everything but pandas. And uh, I'm going to read in uh, a file to work with. So uh, I'm just going to call it, nope, I think that's a, that's a reserved word, my data. And uh, I'm going to use the read underscore CSV option from pandas. Uh, to get the uh, address of where the file is in the current file system, I can click into one of the files that I've loaded in earlier, and you can see up here there is the file path to this exact file, and I can see a little uh, preview of it as well, and I can also see information on um, each of the variables. Oop, and I can download it locally if I'm interested, which is what I just did. Uh, so I'm going to copy this file path, and then paste it in here. Uh, in quotes because it's a string. And this will be different for every file in your uh, uh, data set and if you have multiple data sets they will be in different folders within the input folder. So you might have dot dot slash input slash data set name slash file name. And just to show that it did read in, I'm going to uh, show the head of the data set. You can see that it looks the same as it did uh, in our little file preview. 
little quick tour of this area. You have information on your session, so you can see that this has been running for about five minutes. I started it just before I started the video. Uh, when I commit a version, I will see uh, every version that I've committed here, so I can go back and look at the work that I did previously that I've saved a static version of. Uh, and you can also see that right now I have one uncommitted draft, so this is the draft I'm working in now. I can add additional data, I can upload data locally, I can add additional data sets, uh, and I can also add output files. So if I've created a kernel or someone else has a public kernel that has some sort of file saved from it, I can add those files to this notebook. So you can create a nice little pipeline. Uh, we also have some other settings. So if I want to make my data set, uh, my kernel public, I can do that, or I can add specific uh, account. So I could add my admin account to this as an editor if I was interested in doing that. Uh, I can also change the language here. Docker, when you add uh, custom packages, if you add custom packages, it will create a new Docker version. So that's the computational environment that you ran your work in. And you can refer to previous Docker versions that you've uh, created previously in other kernels and run uh, kernels that you make in the future against that same version. By default, it's going to do the latest available, um, and that will contain, you know, the the, the uh, libraries and modules that we think are most important for data science. Um, and there's there's a lot of them. It's a fairly big Docker. Uh, you can also enable GPU. I'm not going to do that right now. And you can enable internet access uh, to install packages. You can either use uh, pip, the Python package manager, or you can uh, install directly from GitHub. Uh, if you are a command line person, you can also use the API, and this uh, button will take you to our GitHub repo with all of the uh, documentation, or you can see the documentation for the kernels themselves. If you don't like this little panel, you can collapse it whoop, by clicking there. Uh, and finally, you have the uh, console. So if I uh, just want to do, you know, some some basic math or uh, write some vanilla Python, I can run this in the console, uh, and it won't be saved uh, when I when I exit the session. The console output will all be be removed. So if you're just sort of like playing around, the console is a good place to do that. Uh, and finally, you can also restart your session. So this will clear your environment, and give you pretty much a blank slate in which none of your cells have been run. Uh, and the final step is to commit this, uh, and this will bring up a progress window. You can actually click out of here and continue to work because this is being run in a different environment, a, a new, fresh environment. Um, and then once it's done committing, we can go and look at it, uh, and we will see that our, our code that we have here at the point when we commit it has been run top to bottom. Uh, and uh, that's what I'm looking for. Made to look pretty. <laughs> Uh, so you can see the output, and if we wanted to see this output from the top uh, kernel, which we hid, uh, we can choose to show that. There isn't any right now, but sometimes when you import libraries, you'll see warnings and stuff. And that's all you need to know to get started working in the kernels editor in Python. Have fun, and I hope you guys find out lots of interesting stuff.